So we've done an initial server setup. We've created a user, give them root permissions, and also set up a firewall. The next thing we want to do is install the LEMP stack. So we need to log into our server via SSH again. I'm still in here from the previous video, but make sure that you're doing this installation with your newly created user. So at the start of here, you can see I'm logged in as Mark. Make sure that you're not logged in as root. You want to be using your newly created user to do this. So I'm just going to close that down. And then let's jump back in and make sure we're using our user and let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is get an updated package list. So to do that, we need to do a sudo and we can do apt update. Now what this does is it doesn't actually update any software on your system. It simply goes to the repositories and asks them for an updated list of software. So now our system knows what all the latest software in the repository is. So if we actually wanted to upgrade the software on our system, we can do that by saying sudo apt upgrade. And then what this will do is it will check that list we've just downloaded and check it against what we've got installed. And if there is a newer version in the repository, it will install that. So let's just hit enter and see what happens. And you can see here now it sums down and it says all of these packages need to be upgraded. That means the repository has a newer version than what we have installed on the system. So we might as well just upgrade them while we're here. So we can just do a Y and then hit enter. So as you can see, that goes off to the repository, gets all the latest files, unpacks them, and then installs them. So if you're doing this on DigitalOcean, you might come across something like this. And this is because DigitalOcean slightly modifies some of the files in the way that Linux boots up. And this is just so they have better control over restarting and starting servers. So in this case, we just want to keep our local version. That can take a few minutes to run, but now we know our system is all up to date and we have the latest package list. So the first thing we're going to do is just install Nginx. So to do that, it's a sudo apt install Nginx. And then we just hit enter on that. And it's just saying, do you want to install this and all of its dependencies? So yes, we do. And now that's installed, we need to allow it through our firewall. So if we just do a sudo ufw app list, we can see now we have a couple more things in there other than OpenSSH. So we have Nginx in here as well. For this video at the moment, we're just going to be using HTTP. So that is what I'm going to allow through the firewall. Maybe in a later video, we'll set up SSL and then we'd have to allow HTTPS through. So if you're following along and you already have SSL set up on your server, then remember you will need to allow this through as well. So now let's allow this through our firewall. So it's a sudo ufw, and then we want to allow, and then what application do we want to allow? We want to allow nginx. And now because this has a space in its name, we need to put this into quotes. So it's nginx space http. And you see now the rule has been added. So if we just do a sudo ufw status again, we can now see our firewall is allowing through OpenSSH and Nginx. Now that we're allowing that through our firewall, we should be able to see the Nginx default homepage on our IP address. So we just come over to our browser. I'm just going to grab that IP address and open up in a new tab. We can see now we get our Nginx welcome screen. So we know Nginx is set up and working correctly. And our firewall is allowing connections into our server to the port 80 for Nginx. So the next part of the LEMP stack that we're going to install is MySQL. Now you can use a different database engine if you're more familiar with a different one. But for the purpose of this, I'm going to be using MySQL as that's the one I have the most experience with. So to do that, it's a sudo apt install and then it's MySQL hyphen server. And again, it'll ask us, do you want to install this and all of its dependencies? And we do, yes. Now MySQL is installed. Let's run the secure installation script. So to do that, it's sudo space mysql underscore secure underscore installation. Then we just hit enter. Now it's saying, do we want to install the validate password plugin? And what this does is it stops people entering weak passwords. So you can set the strength. So let's just say yes to this so I can show you. And here you can set the level that you want. So a low just means the password has to be at least eight characters. And then obviously you can see there medium and strong. There's got to be a certain amount of numbers, mixed case, etc. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm just going to do low. 
and now it's asking for the password for root so use whatever password you like so i'm just going to use password i know it's not very strong but this is just for a demo server it will be destroyed at the end of this series and there we go we can see now the estimated strength of this password is 50. it's not great but again for the purpose of the demo it doesn't really matter do you want to continue with this yes do you want to remove the anonymous user for MySQL? Yes, we don't want anonymous users logging in. Do you want to allow root to log in remotely? We certainly don't want that, so we're just going to click yes. Do you want to remove the test database? Again, we don't need that, so let's get rid of it. Yes. Do you want to reload the privileges table? So this just means we need to reload the privileges table so it would take into account our new passwords. So we just click yes. And that's all done. Let's log into MySQL. At the moment, we only have our root user in there, and we can't actually log in using our root user password, and I'll show you why now. So what we need to do is log into MySQL as the root user. So if we just do a sudo, so we've now got the elevated privileges, and type in MySQL, as you can see, that's logged us into MySQL as the root user without entering any password. Now let me explain why this is. So we're just going to put a command in here and I'll put this in the comments so you can copy and paste it if you want. It's a select user colon authentication underscore string colon plugin colon host from the MySQL database and the user table. I just put a colon and hit enter. Now you can see these are the users in our system. And you see here our root user that we're logged into MySQL with currently is using the plugin auth socket. What that means is it's using the underlying Linux login system for MySQL. And that is good from a system management point of view because you can control all your users for the system and MySQL in one place. But unfortunately, PHP currently doesn't support this at the time of recording. So what we need to do is create a new user for our application, but we need to set them with the plugin MySQL native password rather than the auth socket. Now let's create that user while we're logged into MySQL here. So we can do create space user and then give a name for the user. I'm just going to call this Laravel. And then we just want to do an at and then local host. And then we want to identify them. So we can do identified by and then we need to give it a password. And again, for the purposes of this demo, I'm just going to use password and then just hit enter. So that's created a new user for us called Laravel and the password is password. So the next thing we need to do is create a database for our application. So to do that, we can just say create database and then give it the name of the database. So let's call ours Laravel underscore admin. And again, you can call this whatever you like. I'm just going to be calling it that. So we'll just hit enter. And you can see now, query OK, one row affected, so our database is created for us. Now we created this using the root user. So our newly created user, which in my case was called Laravel, doesn't have access or privileges on this database. So we need to give them privileges to that user. So to do that, it's a simple grant all privileges on and then what do we want to grant them privileges on? Well, we want to grant them privileges on the database we just created. So it's a simple Laravel underscore admin. And then we want to give them permission on all of that database. Now, obviously, we just need to tell MySQL what user we want to grant all privileges to. So we can just say two. And then again, it's our user, which in my case was Laravel at localhost. Then we just hit enter. And you see here now we've now granted all permissions to that user. So the next thing we need to do is try that out. So if we just type exit, so we're back to our command line. And now let's log into MySQL as our newly created user. So to do that, it's MySQL space and then a hyphen U, the name of the user, which in my case was Laravel. And then we can do space hyphen P and just hit enter. And now it'll ask us for the password. And this is the password for the my SQL user that we just created. So in my case, that was just simply password. Enter, and now we're logged in as our new Laravel user. Next thing, just let's type in show databases. And I'll just hit enter on that. 
and we can see now we can see our Laravel admin database. So this user can view it and they can also create tables, delete tables, etc. So they've got full permissions. This is exactly what we wanted. So that's our MySQL setup and we've created a database and a user. So our application can use them credentials to log into the database. So obviously the final thing we need to do is actually install PHP. So if we just exit out of this, as you can see now we're back to our command line for the server and we're not inside MySQL anymore. Let's install PHP. So to do that, it's a sudo apt install. And we want to install PHP iPhone FPM. So this is PHP process manager for Nginx. And we also need to install a couple of PHP extensions. And these extensions are needed by Composer to install the Composer packages. And also Laravel needs a couple of extensions as well. So we can install these all in one go. So if we just do a space after each one, then we don't have to type sudo apt install, sudo apt install over and over. So we've got our process manager. We also need the PHP MySQL plugin. So obviously PHP can communicate with the database. We need PHP hyphen DOM. We need PHP hyphen MB string. We also need the PHP CLI, the command line tool. Uh, we also need PHP hyphen zip. So these final two plugins here, the CLI and zip, are needed by Composer, but it also needs some system packages to work. So let's install them as well. So we need wget, and we also need unzip. So unzip, and then if we just hit enter, and again, this will run down and say, these are what you want to install. We need these dependencies as well. So we're just going to say yes. Now, once that's installed, if we just type PHP hyphen V, we can see we have PHP installed and on Ubuntu 18.04, that's PHP 7.2. If you want to know how to install different versions of PHP, I've got a video on my Server Ninja channel and I'll pop a link in the description and I'll show you how to install different versions if that's what you want to do. So now we need to tell Nginx that we want to use PHP because at the moment it's only going to serve HTML. So if we head over to the Nginx site server configuration, so to do that, it's cd forward slash etc forward slash nginx. And then if we head into sites enabled, so over in this folder is a list of all the configs currently available to nginx that we want to be enabled. So if we just do an ls, we can see we just have the default one. But I'm just going to open this default one. So to do that, it's a sudo because we need the elevated privileges because we do not own this file. And I'm just going to open it in nano and then the name of the file, default. Now as you can see here, this is just the default configuration for Nginx. And all I'm going to do is just delete everything within this file. So now this file is blank, I'm just going to paste in a basic PHP configuration here. And this is just a basic one to get us up and running. We will need to make changes to this to get Laravel working. But for now, this is all we need. And I'll paste this in the description so you can copy and paste it. You don't have to type it out. I'm not going to go over the specifics of this file in this video. But again, if you want to learn more in depth about server configuration, check out my sister channel, Server Ninja. I'll link in the description again. And I'll have videos on topics such as Nginx configuration files on that channel. So the main things to look at on this configuration file is we're listening on port 80. And our root folder is var www.html. So that's where Nginx is expecting to find the files. These are the files it's looking for. So it's looking for index, index.php, index.html. So once it finds one of them files, it's going to serve it up. And now the server name is example.com, but you can change this to whatever your website is going to be called. So for example, here, let's remove that and just say yoursite.com. And then this configuration is also telling Nginx where it can find PHP. So one thing to take note of here is the PHP socket number. So because I'm using Ubuntu 18.04, we are using PHP version 7.2. Obviously, if you're using a different version of PHP, like in Ubuntu 20.04, for example, it's PHP 7.4, you need to make sure you point to the 7.4 socket and not the 7.2. So let's save this. And in Nano, that's a control O and then hit enter and then a control X to exit Nano. Now, whenever you make any changes to Nginx, there's two things you should do. You should test that configuration file works and then restart Nginx to read that new configuration file. So let's test the configuration file first. And to do that, it's sudo 
nginx hyphen t and click enter. I can see this tests all nginx configuration files, not just the ones we've changed. And it can come back here and it says the test was successful. We just do a sudo system ctl and then we want to reload. And then what do we want to reload? We want to reload nginx. So we can just type nginx and then hit enter. Okay, so that reloads nginx for us and we'll pick up our new configuration files. So now we need to head over to our root directory of where nginx is serving files from. So that's a cd var dub 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 html. And if we just do an ls here, we can see the default .html page that nginx serves, which is what we're seeing here in the browser. So let's remove that. And that's not currently owned by our user, so we'll need super user privileges, so it's sudo. And then we can do an rm for remove, and then just remove that file. So if you start typing the name of a file in Linux, it has autocomplete. So if you just hit tab, you can see that's autocompleted the file name for us. So we don't have to type it all out. So we can just hit enter. That will remove that file. So if we just do an ls, we can see this directory is empty. Perfect. So let's create a PHP file. Now we don't currently have permissions to write to the HTML folder. This is something we will sort in a future video. So for now, we just need super user privileges. So we can just do a sudo and let's open nano and let's create a file called index.php. And inside of nano, let's just create a sample PHP file to test. So let's open our PHP tags and then we want to run PHP info function to print out our PHP configuration. Now let's refresh our browser. And now you can see we get our PHP file served. So now we know Nginx is working and it's configured to run PHP files. So that is our WEMP stack set up. So the next thing we need to do is set up a Git repository to push our code up to and then pull it back down onto the server. 